Hey guys, this is Towny Sim Builds here, and I am finally back with a new build. I know it's been a little while since my last video, but I really want to do something really awesome for my 10th video here. Now, this build is actually inspired by one of my favorite films called Spirited Away, and the film is actually celebrating its 20th anniversary for its original Japanese release, and it's also celebrating its anniversary with the world release this year as well. Now this film is very magical and very fantastical and features a whole world themed around a Japanese bathhouse, which I think is super cool. And I've pretty much created this whole world from the film in this slot for you guys today. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the world of Spirited Away. All right, and here we are with a full view of the lot. Um, if you guys are familiar with Spirited Away, this film is by Studio Ghibli and directed by Hayao Miyazaki. And it does take place, like I said, in this beautiful Japanese bathhouse world. Now, this bathhouse is surrounded by this mystical, seemingly abandoned town, which you can see here, and is also fronted by this large, assumably a train station, which is later revealed to be a ferry dock station, if you will. Now, this build was super fun to make. It was definitely the most challenging and most intensive that I've done um, yet, you guys. Um, but I really love bringing it to life. You can see a lot of the details of the town here. There's even a little river that wraps around the town, and that is, in fact, part of the movie as well. You do see that river forming by nightfall when the spirits do arrive in this town. Um, you can see some of the back areas here. Now, there will definitely be spoilers in the movie, and I'll start with them right now, um, but that back area is actually actually where Chihiro, the main uh, protagonist of the movie, meets Haku, and Haku tries to help her um, survive in this spirit world once she gets trapped here and her parents are turned into pigs, <laughs> crazily enough. But over here is the uh, walkway leading to the bathhouse. There is that big lantern there that actually lights up at night, signaling the arrival of the spirits. And then over here, of course, is the bathhouse itself. I had so much fun kind of sculpting the rocky landscape underneath. The lot is actually like on a big pool, if you will, to simulate the ocean. And I even included the train that actually appears in the world as well. There's kind of like a pseudo entrance and exit there, if you will. And the big giant smokestack and the train itself actually do emit smoke. I used some chimneys and, and it kind of hit them in there very carefully to create that really cool effect for you guys. Circling back is another view of the bathhouse itself. This bathhouse was so intricate to do. There's a lot of these nice balconies with the shoji screens, um, which was super cool. And circling back, we're gonna take a look at the lot in different forms of lighting. Right now, I believe we're in the afternoon lighting. This is the view in the evening. And then this is the view at night. This is definitely one of my favorite views with all of those cool lanterns and lights really glowing in this world. So with that, we will take a closer look at Spirited Away and see what this town is all about. So starting off, we're actually going to have a look at the uh, town itself along with the supposed train station. Now in the movie, Chihiro is a little girl moving with her parents to a new place. Um, but they do stumble upon this town and they're kind of figuring out, you know, what this place is. They're super curious. The father thinks this building right here is actually a train station, but it proves itself to be a station for the ferry boat that will later take the spirits to the town itself. The town is filled with different restaurants and cafes, and assumably no one is actually operating them, or so they think. And this restaurant is actually where Chihiro's parents meet their demise. Unfortunately, they're really hungry and they're greedy and they start eating the food of the spirits, and they later turn into pigs, like I mentioned. This building is a sort of hotel for the spirits. I thought this was a super cool idea um, because I knew in the movie this particular building wasn't a restaurant. So I thought, hey, if you know some spirits are passing by, maybe they want to have their own little um, inn or a little suite to stay in, if you will. The second floor is pretty much the same. Just some nice um, bed areas. There are some bathrooms and there's also a little sitting area by the window as well. So just a really nice cozy space for your ghostly visitors, if you will. 
Moving over here, we have a more traditional, um, I guess, Japanese eatery, if you will. I did notice that in the movie, these buildings closest to the actual bathhouse are more traditional in style. So I did want to kind of uh, keep that little detail in there. I used a lot of objects from the Snowy Escape pack in order to create that nice sense of realism and more um, Japanese authentic feel, if you will. And then over here is the second um, ghost slash uh, spirit hotel, if you will. It's definitely a little bigger and grander. It's got this really nice, very like serene, calm vibe, almost like a spa, I think. Um, so this one does have some nice little suites and bathrooms. They're pretty much um, similar from top to bottom. And then also a nice little sitting slash reading area for your visiting traveling spirits. Now circling back, we're gonna move to the other side of the town and these buildings are also heavily inspired by one seen in the movie. Uh, this one is in fact another restaurant and it has this really cool otherworldly vibe. It almost seems to have maybe like Arabian Moroccan influences there. Um, I'm thinking of Aladdin for some reason. <laughs> I think it's maybe that like blue color scheme with Jasmine, um, but I really love this lot. It does have a kitchen in the back as well. This eatery seems to be more realistic to me from um, a lot of Asian restaurants I've been in. And this one has a nice bar set up, but it also has these really cool sitting areas um, right by those curved walls that you can see here. And of course it does have a back kitchen there as well. Moving back out, we have the other traditional or at least more traditional Japanese eatery. I think this would probably be more in the style of maybe a Japanese bar or maybe a noodle shop, if you will. Uh, and I really personally love this one. I, there was a lot of really cool like nautical details here. Um, these little fish lanterns and there's these really cool painted waves on the screens that I really enjoyed as well. And like I said, another kitchen because we all need kitchens in our restaurants. And then the final building back here is another bar area. Um, this bar is a lot um, longer, if you will. There's a lot more counter space there. And I really love that bar decal from the Snowy Escape Pack as well. We've got those really fun details there in the shelving. And then likewise, the kitchen is in the back here and it's it's pretty narrow. <laughs> it's got an extra fridge, but um, you know, it is there for the sake of realism. Now you might notice these ladders heading up and I did create these kind of loft areas in some of the buildings um, just to add a space for storage, if you will, um, maybe some extra food supplies because there really wasn't too much to do with the second floor, at least I think. So entering the bathhouse now, we're actually going to start at the very bottommost floor. And this is the location of the boiler room. Now in the movie, Haku, the boy trying to assist Chihiro, tells her to go down into the boiler room of Kamaji in order to get herself a job at the bathhouse. Now she does enter this hallway that is lined with pipes just like it is in the movie. And upon going through the exit of the hallway, she enters, in fact, Kamaji's boiler room. So Kamaji is of course the boiler man. He is in charge of the boiler and supplying the water to the tubs in the bathhouse along with um, managing the herbal essences if you will. So you can see the boiler here. I did also include a fireplace. He has these really cool magical soot balls who actually deliver coal into the little fireplace if you will, um, which is really fun. You can see some of the details in his workstation. He has the big wheel there to churn the boiler, a nice cushion, his teapot, all the plates waiting for Lin, which is one of my favorite characters. And as you can see, the wall is full of these shelves. Um, this is where he uses his long spider-like arms to grab all of those herbal essences and infuse the water. And this little detail is actually a little uh, tea table, if you will. And this does appear later in the movie with Haku. And then finally, those little vents there are where the soot balls actually live. And Shihiro does befriend them a little bit as well. This area here is the bottom of the tubs, which we will get to shortly. It's not really much going on here, to be honest with you guys, but it is part of the lot. And then moving over here is the kitchen area. Now, it was really hard doing this area because there were not any clear references for this, but I did my best. I did try to look at some different stills and just create a more industrial yet traditional kitchen um, for the workers of the bathhouse. And there is even a little meat cooler here as well because um, they just they just love making uh, fish and pork and all these delicious meats uh, for their guests, I guess. 
Over here is the servant quarters, and this is specifically for the frogmen that work in the bathhouse. And it sounds ridiculous, but they truly, in fact, are frogs, or maybe semi-human, semi-frog people that tend to the kitchens and also tend to other aspects of the bathhouse. And we do have um, some little bathrooms here for them as well. And then in the very corner, I actually added a bedroom for Kamaji, the boiler man. Um, the poor thing, I think he sleeps in the boiler room in the movie because Yubaba, the witch in charge, she's just not that, um, she doesn't offer much hospitality there. Um, so I figured I would make him a really nice cozy spot so he didn't have to sleep in the boiler room. And then leading over here, we see the hallway where Lin takes Chihiro up to Yubaba in order to help her out. With that, we are now onto the main floor of the bathhouse, and this floor is where the spirits would cross over this nice little red bridge here. And the entrance itself is very much heavily inspired by the movie. I kept um, trying to figure out all of that nice like awning and signage work going on uh, to match what is seen in the movie itself. You can see these really cool trellis details around the uh, little courtyards, if you will. And I had a lot of fun piecing these together. These flowers um, right here, the bright white ones, were actually very, very close to what is in the movie itself. You can see a lot of those nice stone details kind of wrapping around and forming a nice walkway. And we do have these really beautiful bonsai style trees, as well as some cherry blossoms there. Now moving over here, this courtyard is seen in the movie itself. Um, this courtyard is where Chihiro meets No Face, and No Face is a very mysterious but somewhat friendly spirit at first, but unfortunately the poor thing gets corrupted by a lot of the antics of the bathhouse itself. You do see the exit to um, Kamaji's boiler room as well with the stairs. And then moving over here, we do enter the actual bathhouse itself. Now the foreman's area is here. The foreman is another frogman who is in charge of handing out bath tokens. And the bath tokens pretty much are um, assigned to the workers in order to infuse the tubs with the appropriate herbal essences. And these are the tubs themselves. Now originally I wanted these to be springs or hot tubs, but the ones in the game just really didn't fit the vibe and aesthetic of Spirited Away. So thanks to some really um, very nifty simmers out there, I did figure out how to kind of glitch these fountains into pools so your sims can actually swim in them like a pool, um, which I thought was really fun. And at least I did get the round shape of the tubs, right? And then going over here, we have another room. This room is in fact pictured in the movie, um, but when Chihiro is seen cleaning this room, it's actually completely barren. There's nothing in there. So I figured it would be a nice sitting area for um, visiting spirits who are maybe preparing for their bath or maybe they're just trying to relax after their bath. So there are some really nice paintings and bookcases there as well. Now, given that this is an onsen bathhouse, um, there is a locker room slash public restroom area where guests would essentially clean themselves off before going to the nice hot tubs, or maybe want to kind of wash off after having their nice stay in the pool. Uh, this would definitely be the place to do that. So we have some nice private stalls and then a whole line of sinks that are outside here as well. Um, so it's very fitting. It's very fitting for a bathhouse or very fitting for a community pool, whatever you guys want to make it. And then finally, we have the staircases that lead up to the second floor. Looking at the second floor, it's probably the simplest of the floors, but I definitely wanted to get it as close to the movie as I could. And going in, this is a really cool loft area seen in the movie. There is this really big catwalk going across and you can actually see you Baba and the workers overlooking Lin and Chihiro as they deal with the supposed stink spirit. The stink spirit actually turns out to be a river spirit who is polluted, and he exits through that nice archway there, uh, right in the middle of those nice vases. Now on the sides are both dining areas. These are also inspired by the movie, and this particular room is where Chihiro confronts No Face. And at this point, No Face has been corrupted. He's actually eaten workers and lots of food and turned into this big monster. And the room he's in is fairly simple. It does have um, some dining areas. It does have a lot of cool paintings on the wall, as you can see there with the kabuki and the really cool um, like tiger decal. And this room is essentially the same. I really love these small tables. I think they're called kotatsu tables, if I'm not mistaken. And then moving over here, we have the staircases leading to the servant quarters. 
Now entering this area of the bathhouse, this area is specifically designed for the female um, attendants and servants in the bathhouse. And these include Chihiro, Lin, and a bunch of other girls who actually appear more so as human, um, which was very interesting to me. Their room is essentially filled with beds that are packed to the brim, and the beds in the movie are actually sleeping bags, but I thought I had to glam it up a little bit and, and make it more fitting in style to the world itself. And we do have a lot of these nice paintings and these bright red curtains that are seen in the movie as well. Um, you guys saw a little bit of those like closet drawer areas there, which do line the walls in the movie. And then over here is a bathroom for the ladies. And so there's a nice kind of like vanity sink area. And then also some nice individualized um, bathrooms there as well. So nice and private. Uh, I think it's very fitting for them because I don't, I don't, actually see one in the movie, but it has to be there, right? And then moving over here, we do have a view of the um, tower that is seen on the facade. Um, I don't really know what's in this room, but I just made it a sitting area. And then moving over here, we have the lounge for the ladies as well. Unfortunately, I didn't have any room for the frogmen to do anything um, too nice, unfortunately, but um, this room is pretty cozy. It does have a kitchenette. It has a nice kind of bar stool area to eat or read a book. And then there is another kotatsu table um, over there in the corner area as well. Now there's also a nice little living space. You do have this larger couch, as well as some nice plush cushions if you'd like to chill out and read a book there. And with that, we will move on to Yubaba's penthouse. And here we are with our last stop in the bathhouse with none other than Yubaba's penthouse. Uh, this area pretty much holds her office and living space, but we do start with the main entrance hall seen early on in the movie. Uh, Chihiro actually travels here and enters this space, really hesitant to enter Yubaba's office. You can see these really nice giant vases here and the big red doors that she tries to knock on before pretty much being sucked inside by Yubaba's magic, if you will. This is a view of her office. I tried keeping it as close to the movie as I could. Um, her room is very red, it's very ornate and lit up by a lot of different like lights and candles. And um, it was just really super fun to make. You can see her desk here. Um, she does have these portraits of, I believe, family members, but because they look like her, it's pretty much like the same portrait everywhere around, if you will. Moving over here, we do have a view of the fireplace, and this is seen quite frequently. Uh, this is first seen when Chihiro signs her name away to Yubaba to work in the bathhouse, and later when she tries to protect Haku. This area is just a small sitting area and library, just kind of extending the space. And then back here, we actually have an entrance to Baby Bo's room. Now, Baby Bo is actually a huge giant baby and the supposed son of Yubaba, I guess. Uh, but he does live in a pretty lavish room. Um, it is covered in toys, as you can see. And thankfully, um, due to these uh, couches or sofas from City Living, I was able to create the nice padded effect that his room has in the movie. Um, like I said, it's loaded with cushions, it has big stuffed animals. We do have this really cool like galaxy um, lamp in the middle because Yubaba does have that feature for Bo where she can actually change the time of day with the lamp itself and kind of change the lighting inside the room. And there is a little chair that she sits on at the towards the end of the movie when she's freaking out. Bo has been taken away by her sister. It's really, it's really crazy, you guys. <laughs> but anyway, here is Yubaba's bedroom. This bedroom is actually not pictured in the movie, but I figured it would match the styling of her office, and it would also be connected to her son's room as well. So you can see a lot of that nice, rich, exotic decor in there, um, and very lavish there as well. Over here, finally is her master bathroom and in the movie Chihiro actually breaks into this room from the outside so I did want to keep the positioning and the details right and this room is pretty lavish it does have more of her fancy pots and it does feature the big tub scene when she does get into the bathroom itself. So looking at the lot specs as a whole, uh, the Spirited Away world is in fact a 64 by 64 lot. So it's fairly big, but you should definitely find space for it maybe in Windenburg or maybe in Henford on Bagley, if you will. And 
in terms of lot type, this is technically set to a pool um, because I did use pools in place of the tubs to get a better feel and look of Spirited Away. But you can very easily change this to an onsen bathhouse to be more um, culturally appropriate, if you will. Now, in terms of packs, this is probably my most intensive build yet, but technically it only includes four packs. So we obviously use base game, but we do have content from Get to Work, Get Together, City Living, and Snowy Escape. There is a fifth pack, and that is, of course, the Holiday Celebration Pack. But as always, this pack is free, so you don't need to worry about buying it. All right, guys, and that is it for Spirited Away in the world of the Bathhouse and Spirit Town. I really hope you guys enjoy this lot, and if you have seen the movie itself, I really do hope it inspires some really fun gameplay, and maybe it has sprung some memories of some really great moments crafted by the great Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli. As always, I love hearing all of your thoughts and feedback on these different lots, and if you do enjoy fantastical builds or maybe you want to see more from Hayao Miyazaki, uh, let me know. I definitely have some more plans in the future. And with that, this has been Townie Sim Builds signing off. Thanks so much for watching, guys.